Hey guys, Tyler here. The Bajorans are one of the most thoroughly fleshed out alien species in Star Trek. A humanoid race native to the planet Bajor in the Alpha Quadrant, the Bajorans have one of the oldest and richest cultures in known space. Having suffered greatly at the hands of the Cardassian Union for half a century, the Bajorans were finally liberated in 2369. Shortly afterwards, the discovery of a nearby stable wormhole to the faraway Gamma Quadrant thrust Bajorans onto the interstellar stage. A highly religious people, Bajorans worship a species of non-corporeal aliens who live in the wormhole and who the Bajorans call the Prophets. One controversial theory suggests that the Bajorans and the Prophets are one and the same, the Prophets having allegedly evolved from Bajorans millennia in the future as the Prophets exist outside of time. In this video, I'd like to examine the merits of this theory, as well as Bajoran biology and early history in more detail, comparing them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. Bajorans by and large resemble humans in terms of their appearance. They are distinguished by a series of horizontal creases across their noses, usually numbering between four and seven. Some Bajorans are also shown to possess a small, crooked horizontal ridge between their eyebrows. Their complexion ranges from light to dark, just as in humans, and their blood is red in color just as in humans. They also have a lifespan of at least 100 years, much like future humans. Okay, so as you can tell, a pattern is emerging. Indeed, the Bajorans are one of the most human-like aliens in Star Trek. But don't get it twisted, there are some significant biological differences between our two species. For instance, pregnant Bajorans gestate for five months as opposed to nine months, and Bajoran women sneeze uncontrollably while pregnant in a rough analog to morning sickness. But more unique facts about Bajorans become evident in examining their history, including and especially their evolution. In order to fully appreciate the basis for Bajoran's biology, we must first, though, examine their homeworld. Bajor is a very Earth-like M-class planet with vast oceans, polar ice caps, and at least three continents. Bajor's rotation period is 26 hours, and it has five moons, one of which, Gerardo, sported a vibrant M-class ecosystem with endemic complex life. That is, until 2369, when the Bajoran Provisional Government controversially decided to exploit the moon's molten core to supply resource-deprived post-occupation Bajor with much-needed energy. This resulted in Gerardo's becoming largely uninhabitable and later being reclassified to N-class, or Venus-like, due to the huge amount of pollutants released into the atmosphere. In real life, it's long been uncertain whether a moon orbiting a planet of any size, be it Earth-like or a gas giant like Jupiter or Saturn, could sustain an Earth-like biosphere on its surface. Of course, we have good reason to believe that moons in our solar system, like Europa and Enceladus, and quite a few more, might be able to support complex life in subsurface oceans. And we know that Titan, Saturn's largest moon, has a thick nitrogen atmosphere. But they're too far away from the sun for liquid water not to freeze on their surface. Even Io, which boasts volcanic activity due to tidal heating from Jupiter, lacks a dense atmosphere. That said, a moon the size of Ganymede just under 3% Earth's mass, could host an ecosphere at an Earth-like distance from its star, though such a moon would have significant tidal effects on an Earth-like planet. As far as the Bajoran star system, according to various non-canon reference materials, it is located between 50 and 60 light-years from Earth. The system's primary, Bahava'el, is a yellow dwarf star. Star Trek star charts gives Bahava'el a designation of G25, 
indicating it is a solar twin, having nearly identical properties to our sun in terms of mass, brightness, temperature, and so on. While there are no true solar twins between 50 and 60 light years from Earth, there are plenty of solar analogs, yellow dwarf stars with broadly similar properties to our sun. In any event, much of what Star Trek star charts has to say is quite dubious which is unfortunate because I love that book. One piece of information that's quite contradictory throughout various sources is whether Bajor is the seventh or eleventh planet in its system, or some other ordinal. Any of these could be theoretically true as the number of planets orbiting a star is quite arbitrary, as long as the orbits don't interfere with each other. Indeed, there are lots of solar systems that are more densely packed than ours. Regardless, Bajor orbiting a yellow dwarf star would have major implications on the evolution of life on its surface. We see that vegetation on Bajor's surface is green, and the planet's oceans and skies reflect blue light during the daytime. Both of these are consistent with the way an Earth-like atmosphere and pigments and plant life would interact with the wavelengths of light from a sun-like star. As we learn in the Next Generation episode, The Chase, four and a half billion years ago, an ancient humanoid race called the Progenitors seeded their genetic code in the oceans of countless M-class worlds throughout the galaxy. This programmed DNA sequence would have resulted in the evolution of thousands of variations of the humanoid form, an explanation given for why so many Star Trek aliens look like us. In the case of Bajor, the planet's Earth-like climate would have been conducive to the evolution of a quasi-mammalian form, even though this form of guided evolution is not really how natural selection works. In case you needed a reminder, really more like the writers need a reminder. But in any case, prehistoric Bajorans would have emerged from an order broadly similar to Earth's primates millions of years ago. Beyond this evolutionary threshold, Bajoran recorded history begins much deeper in the past than one might imagine. Bajoran civilization is said in the Next Generation episode in Sinro to have begun over half a million years ago. For comparison, the oldest fossils of Homo sapiens date back to 300,000 years ago in Africa. But we didn't reach so-called behavioral modernity, including inventing language, until between 60 and 160,000 years ago. And we didn't even invent agriculture or begin to form permanent settlements until between 8 and 13,000 years ago. But supposedly, the Bajorans had done all of this while Homo erectus was still the dominant hominid species on Earth. And I just want to pat myself on the back a little bit for not getting tongue-tied with dominant hominid science, philosophy, mathematics, art, and architecture. Ancient Bajorans were renowned, we're told, for their accomplishments in science, philosophy, mathematics, art, and architecture. After this, there's a huge gap in Bajoran recorded history, with some sources placing its true origins closer to 30,000 years ago. It's at this time that the prophets began influencing Bajoran society. These life forms, whose origins are never really revealed in canon, nonetheless say that they are of Bajor and proven to possess exceptional abilities. These include giving Bajoran glimpses of the future, glimpses that are written down as prophecies and used to guide succeeding generations. The prophets were, and still are, worshipped by the Bajorans as gods, and they built magnificent cities to honor them. And about 10,000 years ago, the first in a series of orb-like objects called the Tears of the Prophets began to appear in the skies of Bajor. Over the millennia, nine of these artifacts, which produce intense metaphysical hallucinations, would gradually appear one by one and usher in a new era of spiritual connection between the Bajorans and the Prophets. Each of the orbs possesses unique properties. For example, the Orb of Time can allow a person to experience instantaneous transportation to another time and place. And in the year 2370, 
1925, Captain Benjamin Sisko sort of closes the circle, so to speak, by discovering the 10th previously unknown orb buried on the planet Tyree, later called the Orb of the Emissary. While it may seem unfair to gloss over the rest of Bajoran history, especially the Cardassian occupation, this is, after all, a video about the relationship between the Bajorans and the Prophets. But what I'd like to do now is turn our attention to the question in the title of this video. Let's start with an overview of the Prophets themselves. In their natural state, the Prophets appear as translucent blue energy and are capable of rapid movement through any environment. When communicating with visitors to their own domain, the prophets can appear as someone the visitor is familiar with by probing their consciousness. When outside their native realm, prophets can communicate with others by possessing a body, using it as a vessel. The possessor has complete access to the host's memories and can convincingly act according to the host's personality. The host is conscious of what is happening but has no control over the possessor's actions. This tactic can also be employed by the Pa Wraiths, a group of malevolent non-corporeal beings banished from the Celestial Temple, the Wormhole, to the Fire Caves of Bajor. It's like Lord of the Rings. Well, no, I should not include that. The Pa Wraiths are often referred to by Bajorans as false prophets, and they exhibit a red hue in their natural form, symbolizing, from a thematic standpoint, the color of fire. All of this makes the Prophets and the Pa Wraiths some of the most supernatural aliens in Star Trek, exhibiting characteristics stereotypical of ghosts. Ooh. As I explored in my video about non-corporeal bait beings, as I explored in my video about non-corporeal beings from Star Trek, many of their abilities violate the conventional laws of physics. For example, the manipulation of matter by pure thought, telekinesis, runs contrary to the laws of thermodynamics, particularly regarding the quantity of force applied to an object, as well as how entropy always increases in a closed system. This is why things like telekinesis and ghosts have never been observed in the lab, even using the most sensitive equipment. Before speaking with Starfleet Commander Benjamin Sisko, destined to fulfill the role of emissary in the Bajoran religion, the prophets had no concept of linear time. It was only after Sisko explained linear time that the prophets became increasingly involved in corporeal existence. From the prophets' point of view, many key events in the past, including how they arranged Sisko's birth, may have occurred after Sisko told them about linear time. This may even stretch back to the prophets' early interventions in the lives of Bajorans, including the first appearance of the orbs. All of this could have happened at any point during the prophets' subjective timeline. Indeed, they view past, present, and future simultaneously, much like Fringe's transhuman observers, Watchmen's post-human Dr. Manhattan, or the squid-like heptopods from Arrival. But the question is, given that the prophets frequently say that they are of Bajor and can provide Bajorans with glimpses of the future, are the two species actually related? It's possible. Much like the 27th century observer's relationship to present-day humanity in Fringe, the prophets could potentially represent one far-future evolution of the Bajorans. The prophets are incredibly powerful, being capable of erasing entire fleets of starships out of existence. But they are also inherently limited. For example, massive amounts of chroniton radiation can kill them. Much like the Q continuum, though, the wormhole may represent a higher dimensional plane of reality, artificially constructed by far-future Bajorans to escape the limitations of mortality and other constraints 
of corporeal existence. This would not be without some precedent. As humans continue to technologically advance, it's likely that we will continue to master engineering on increasingly smaller scales of the universe. Various steps of this advancement have been codified into a sort of reverse Kardashev scale, formulated by cosmologist John D. Barrow. In his view, humans have found it much more cost-effective to manipulate reality on, once again, increasingly smaller scales rather than increasingly larger ones. One potential solution, by the way, to the Fermi paradox. Type 1 minus civilizations are capable of building structures, mining, and joining and breaking solid objects. Currently, we inhabit the space between between type 3 minus, capable of manipulating molecular bonds, and type 4 minus, capable of harnessing nanotechnology and creating complex artificial life. At the very end of Barrow's scale are type 6 minus, capable of manipulating the most elementary particles, and type omega minus, capable of manipulating the basic structure of space and time. The prophets may inhabit the space between these two stages of development given their limited time travel capabilities. Continued cultural splits between different factions of Bajorans may be what precipitated the banishment of the Pa Wraiths. As for how and why far future Bajorans would have forgotten the concept of linear time, well, Given enough time, anything is possible. If your civilization has existed a certain way for thousands of years, it's quite easy to forget vast arrays of knowledge about how your ancestors lived. That's what the Dark Ages in Europe were about. Knowledge was lost, only to be regained centuries later. That said, given we lack a complete anthropological and archaeological record of how our ancestors lived, it's been a struggle to gain back much of the knowledge of previous generations, and much of what we have found is highly fragmented. But this may be exactly what happened when the Cisco first met with the prophets, reminding them of their origins and potentially setting in motion thousands of years of galactic history. So are the prophets far future Bajorans? Maybe. What do you think? Let me know down below. Once again, I obviously did not explore every facet of Bajoran history and culture in this video, like how they've been capable of interstellar travel since at least the 16th century, if not long before, using rudimentary solar sail spacecraft. But I might examine more about the Bajorans' ancient interactions with other cultures in a future video. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads, and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. May the prophets guide you well. Thank <laughs> you.